Now the Dow Jones is at a record high and the US dollar is at its highest level in more than a decade. Investors seem to be rallying around Donald Trump's plan for the economy. But what are the bulls watching and what are they ignoring? Moby Nasser takes a look. We are going to make America great again. Make America great again. That's the message that got enough votes for Donald Trump to win the White House. And now it seems investors are also turning into believers. The US dollar has shot up since Trump's election. It's now at its highest level in almost 14 years compared to a basket of currencies. That's because investors believe interest rates in the US will soon rise. I think markets are still pricing in a potential Fed rate rise. One of his criticisms of Janet Yellen was she was keeping, keeping rates artificially low. Um, as a sop to the Democrat Party. The fact of the matter is the US economy is growing, albeit at a much slower pace than it was a year ago. Um, I think potentially he could welcome a rate rise now. Stocks in mining, manufacturing, transportation and financial companies are also soaring. Investors are counting on better business thanks to Trump's plan to raise spending, cut taxes and ease regulations. No business of any size from a Fortune 500 company to a mom-and-pop shop to a freelancer living from gig to gig will pay more than 15% of their business income in taxes. Trump also wants to protect U.S. businesses from foreign competitors, and he likely shelve a trade deal with the European Union. For quite some time, uh, at it would be a natural pause, of course, while we wait for the next administration. Then for quite some time, uh, TTIP would probably be in, in the freezer. And then what happened when it's defrosted, I think we will need to, to wait and see. Critics say Trump's plan is Reaganomics, that it's 30 years too late and the world's changed. It's this sort of new form of Reaganomics, as you'd say, you know, 30 years on. Um, may well not work because, you know, households are so relatively indebted. And I have, again, I have to question. But it, let's say that, uh, you know, the, the, all these companies, the Apples, etc., you know, repatriate all this cash. Is that cash, is that cash from the private sector going to be redeployed in the real economy, in investment, in plant, in jobs, in training? And I have a horrible feeling it's not going to be. Trump's no stranger to adversity and he's proven critics wrong before. But pulling the U.S. economy out of the doldrums will be his biggest test yet. Will be Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, let's go to our senior business producer, Azhar Sukri, who is in Ankara. Azhar, the Fed has been planning to raise interest rates for months. What are the prospects of that now following this election? Yes, Donald Trump has promised to spend as much as $550 billion dollars uh, on new infrastructure in the United States and to cut uh, taxes, corporate taxes. A lot of this, of course, aimed at reinvigorating the economy, uh, but in the process, that may also stoke up inflation. And there's a high likelihood that if inflation does start rising fast as a result of Donald Trump's policies, the Federal Reserve is likely to step in and start raising interest rates to cool the economy down again. Now, remember, the Fed raised interest rates once last year. There's a high likelihood that they're going to raise interest rates in next month's uh, meeting. And if inflation does start rising quickly, the pace of those federal rate rises could also go up as we go into 2017. Well, cutting taxes and increasing spending usually leads to more debt. So why exactly is the dollar gaining? You're right. In a normal environment, it is a recipe for more debt. Uh, in fact, some economists are predicting uh, that US government debt under Donald Trump could go up to about 105% of GDP by 2026. That's up from about 77% right now. But remember, Rising debt is actually the lesser of two evils here. The, uh, the bigger problem is actually low or falling consumer prices or deflation. You just have to look at Japan. Two decades nearly of lost economic activity because consumer prices have failed to rise quickly enough. That has sapped the Japanese economy 
of its, uh, of its vigor, uh, of its ability to create new jobs. And uh, both in America and in Europe, of course, they've been struggling ever since the uh, 2008 financial crisis to reinvigorate uh, consumer prices and inflation. So Donald Trump is betting that he may have to ra raise debt levels, but the benefits of that could be to reinvigorate the economy and stoke up inflation to where it needs to be. Around 2% is what the Federal Reserve is targeting. So investors are looking at the, uh, the positives right now, but what, what are the risks here? There are several risks, uh, and we're seeing some of them already. Uh, we're seeing a sell-off in the emerging markets. There is also the possibility that the bubble that's being created right now in asset prices could burst, but a much bigger bubble could, uh, could also be created in terms of house prices and uh, all sorts of other assets which could go uh, drastically higher if Donald Trump's plans go through Congress. And if that bubble collapses, it could make the 2008 financial crisis look like a mild pop in comparison. Azhar, thank you very much.